A very good morning to you and welcome to K24 this morning. My name is Mungala Mbuvi and it being a Tuesday, you know how we do. We talk about money, money, money. And today I want to look, one of the, uh, look at rather, uh, one of the industries that was hardly hit at uh, the beginning of 2020 because of the obvious reason that was COVID-19. Please let us know where you're watching us from. And indeed, if you're in the tourism and hospitality industry, how have things been so far? Joining me, I will let you know who uh, these individuals are. But just to let you know what we're talking about today, we are discussing the, um, the impact uh, of the COVID-19 on the hospitality industry. That is um, navigating the impact of uh, COVID-19. And joining me today, we do have, and I'll start with the lady in the house, the head of sales and marketing at Crown Plaza Nairobi Airport Hotel. Uh, Karibu tena sana Anzuba. Thank you very much. Good Ka morning. Asanti sana. And of course a gentleman who is not necessarily new to the show, but he's new in uh, regards to this uh, discussion. It is none other than Peter Musioki, the director of Usafiri Tours. Uh, Peter, good morning. Good morning. Uko salama? Asanti sana. Mimi naona ile kahawa yetu imekujenga poa sana. Kabisa. Uko uko too fit yani una yeah. glow. Sijui kama umekupatia ile sausage uh, nilikuwa nimeambiwa kupatia. Noma. Ama umeikata. No. <laughs> <laughs> and of course and, yeah. and you were here pretty early and uh, you were telling me it's because of traffic and we, we more or less drive from the same area. But um, how have things been uh, so far in regards uh, to traffic and especially in regards to Crown Plaza where you guys are situated the construction tuanze tu hapo kwanza. Well quite frankly that um, I think it's a good thing to start with because mm -hmm that whole traffic and everything is actually as a result of a future plan. Oh. So that whole new road being made, mm -hmm. I think ideally and the long, in the long run it will be a good thing for the country. Yeah. However, just like all good things, <laughs> it does take a toll mm -hmm. on the people along that road. Yeah. So for us at Crown Plaza and Nairobi Airport, we are based at the airport right inside JKI, mm -hmm. actually three minutes from the tunnels. Mm -hmm. So that's a good Wait, thing for us. Wait, 23 minutes from the terminals? Three. Three minutes. Or oh, three minutes. From, yes. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Three minutes from the terminal. So anybody who's actually coming into the city mm -hmm. and doesn't have to go actually into Nairobi through yes. Mombasa Road, yes. then of course it's most ideal to stay in the airport. But what, what advised, because you know, until, until I, I saw, I think I saw someone inviting me to an event at Crown Plaza and I was like, where are you from? Crown Plaza in Kwanga Upper Hill. They were like, no, 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 kunengine kondania airport. And I'm like, wait, what? You guys are actually inside the airport. That's a really good question yeah. because it's actually one thing we've been struggling with for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a Crown Plaza in Upper Hill and that's the one that's been older. It's yes. been in the market for a bit of time. Uh, we at the airport rebranded to Crown Plaza mm -hmm. in 2018. All right. Actually, we did open in 2017, mm -hmm. but under a different name, okay. the Belazizi Premier Limited. Mm -hmm. So most people probably know that because it was a huge event, the first airport hotel in the country. Yes. So there was a whole big you know, show mm -hmm. about it. So uh -huh. Then we did open and rebranded. So right. truly, yes, there is a Crown Plaza Nairobi mm -hmm. Airport. Yeah, because I was like, wait, you guys, what do you mean there's an airport? Uh, I mean, I'll tell into the airport. I found that crazy. And the very first uh -huh. five-star airport hotel in Kenya. Okay, so, so I can parachute from a chopper and just, you know, land inside the airport. Right there, like you said, <laughs> three minutes from the terminal. Uh -huh. And you're right like there. Actually, and yes. I'm sure this one is a question probably you've been asked by either clients, customers, or whatever. off? Uh, no, mm. and I'll say because the building and the structure is actually made with that in mind. Yeah. So how the hotel has been built, it mm -hmm. has double glazed windows and everything. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we are at a maximum level of four floors. Mm -hmm. So that then we don't interfere with the flight path. Okay. So for our guests, what would happen is they'll actually enjoy seeing the flights coming in and out, yes. but you don't hear it. Nice. So it's a view, it's a beautiful view. Okay. But we've made the hotel and it's constructed in such a way that the noise actually stays outside yeah. where it belongs. Right. We'll, we'll get to, to the hotel part in a minute. Okay. Um, Peter again, once again, karibu sana kwenye kipindi. Asante. Usafiri to us. Thank you for having um, me. Yeah. You guys have uh, been there just, you know, from Juzi, but you're making waves. Everyone now, now on my IG, no nangatu usafiri to us. I, I saw a picture of uh, some of your clients uh, on, on, on a yacht. Where was that? That was in Mombasa. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we normally get clients. In fact, those who are clients from the States. Yes. So what you're doing is uh, we are having, or rather, I wouldn't say uh, good, uh, I would say good connections yet, mm -hmm. but we've gotten good clients so far. Yeah. But I'll give you a brief of how Usafiri started. Right. Usafiri started to back way in 2011. Oh, really? Yes. I started seeing you guys, uh, when was it? Was it November? I, I think? know, I yeah. know. But now uh, we started as a small company then. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the reason why we call it Safari is because 
it was generally transport. Okay. So what we did, we started as a car hire company. Mm -hmm. So we started with one, two cars. Mm -hmm. We could do ca car hires and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then at some point, I got so busy, I yeah. decided to take some time. A break. Then you I you're realized... Busy. You're only saying I'm busy, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> but now we are back. There's a new sheriff in town. Uh -huh. And uh, we are, we've rebranded. Okay. It was Usafiri Tours. Now we call it to Safari Tours and Travel uh -huh. Group. Yeah. So now you take guys to the usual Masai Mara, Masai Mara um, Serengeti. Mombasa, Serengeti. Yes. And yes. Uh -huh. we're also doing international. Oh, yes. So if I want to go to Miami, welcome to Miami. I talk to you. Trust you, me. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Mutani fikisha Miami. Kabisa. Apo kwa Palm Beaches. Ukondani. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Sasa, so, so, but, yeah. you know, rebranding and becoming now Safari Tours and Travel, did that happen during the pandemic? or? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, that started way back, uh, or rather last year uh, in mid-Feb. Okay. Uh, we really didn't know the pandemic was coming. Yeah. So what we Muliko did... Muliko mladha ni korona, to Wuhan. China. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. But to uh, of course, we prayed. We knew that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Then, unfortunately, it hit us. Yes. So we didn't lose hope. We kept going. Uh, the thing was uh, staying strong. Uh, we had, of course, uh, gotten some budget to do advertising, get clients to enroll. Uh, we had already booked clients, and mm. we had, unfortunately, to cut short of that. Mm. Uh, when the fleet... Uh, the flights the now were flights, canceled. Yeah, they were canceled. But they, no so, so how, how did you deal with that? Because I'm sure some clients had already uh, given you like an advance. Zile za shikaka deposit. Yeah. Ikifika July mtuangu. Of course, there are those, there are those adamant clients. Mm. There are those adamant clients who would say, no, 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 it's bad. Uh, I need my money back. There are those clients who would say, keep my money. Uh -huh. uh, when we resume back, uh -huh. I'm going to fly or rather I'm going to use your services again. Yes. But uh, it, was, it was a challenge. It mm. was a huge challenge. Yeah. But we thank God, at least from August, uh, there was some open wave. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the president mm -hmm. who gave us the opportunity to start uh, business again. Mm -hmm. And uh, those clients who were, were with me during this time, I thank them all. Yeah. And uh, they need to be back home. But I know that must have been crazy. When someone tell, calls you, eh, unacheki manze mbuvi calling, unasema, guy, we anataka tu pesa yaki eh, sasa. Shida. Eh. shida. And the accounts, you know, in business, you yes. have to really budget, uh, use stuff, pay mm. stuff. But unfortunately, uh, not. I can't complain. Yes. Uh, we were able to manage. Mm. And I thank God that uh, all went well. Yes. And uh, we are pushing. How was it for you, Anne, uh, you know, as Crown uh, Plaza Nairobi Airport Hotel, how was it when you guys started seeing lockdown after lockdown, it becoming crazier and crazier, and the numbers of coronavirus just going higher and higher? Honestly, it was very shocking, and especially those of us who are at the airport, because that's actually the first point. Even all the guests coming into Kenya as a country generally would actually fly through JKIA. Mm. So we do get a lot of that inflow, first of all before they go to elsewhere. Like he says, he takes people everywhere, even to Masai Mara. Before mm -hmm. you get to Masai Mara, yeah. that's where you stop. Mm -hmm. So we get to see that footfall that comes into the country. So it was very shocking to see that um, hotels at the airport, which were used to good occupancies, quite frankly, since we opened, and even other hotels around the airport, mm. operating good levels of occupancy, so maybe 70, 80, up to even 90% sometimes. Mm. And then now, the flights are not coming in because th those are our source markets. Yeah. So you go from hero to zero, and it's very, very shocking for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was really the time you realize, okay, hold on, what else, what are we going to do? And, and what is this thing anyway? Yeah. That pandemic is not something anybody expected. We did not know how long mm. it would take. This is not a, a, a cholera that you know, yeah. let's just contain for a few days. You know, or you've learned how to deal with it yet. It was very strange to all of us. So it was very difficult at that point to figure out what next to do. And then again, of course, we did think it would take that long. So obviously you're like, you know what, let's just take it easy. Let's mm -hmm. just wait it out. Let's see what's going to happen. A lot of things were being handled by government, obviously, at the point or at the time. Mm -hmm. So you wait on it. Uh, but really, the, for us, it was a big, big hit. Yeah. A very big hit. Yeah. Because, did, yeah. Did, were you engaging the government, like you said? Were you engaging the government in terms of, hey, okay, that's what I say. Mm -hmm. Or it was just sit, wait, and, and just hope something happens? Well, yeah, there's hope, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the government is... is, is uh, continuously engaged. In fact, it was totally engaging with hotels at the point because I think even at that time they were trying to see even uh, the Kenyans who didn't need to come back home and mm -hmm. all of that. So hotels had to be expected to accommodate mm -hmm. our, our countrymen and women and children mm -hmm. who are coming back home. Mm -hmm. So the government did involve yeah. uh, hotels yeah. just so that we can be able to give them those facilities. There was obviously the quarantine situation and everything. Some hotels participated, others did not. I mean, mm -hmm. it got all the way to even institutions like schools. 
So at that point, there was a lot of engagement back and forth. So, but with, uh, now government. you being in charge of uh, sales marketing at your organization, yes. did, you, did you start now thinking of, of other opportunities that you could take advantage of uh, during the pandemic and say, okay, fine, we, flights might not be coming in, ships are not docking at uh, you know Mombasa, but mm. we can do A, B, C, D to en at least ensure there's some kind of income coming through. Absolutely, you had to think out of the box because then we cannot now rely on our traditional sources. Mm. So what we did see happening is a little bit of more of movement domestically. And then we're like, how do you tap into that business? Yeah, in as much as also there was in the inter-county kind of lockdowns as well, mm -hmm. but still those who could move could move. Yeah. So the little movement that was there, we were like, okay, we're also at the airport. If there's any flight in and out, then this is where to wait it out. And this is where you can come and spend a bit of time to connect yeah. to another destination. Mm -hmm. So we did look at even just giving um, special prizes, you know, discounted prizes, mm. special offers, mm -hmm. just so that anybody who really must travel, of course there was essential travel at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, even at the airport still, in as much as the flights were locked, there were also cargo. Cargo was not locked down. Mm -hmm. So cargo was still moving. Mm -hmm. So we had to take care of now those kind of people because that's yeah. still an opportunity and it was great. And that's yeah. what actually kept us afloat. And it, kept, and it worked for you guys? It did work for us, guys, yes. And what about for you, Peter? Because, um, you know, a company that had just uh, rebranded in February, then before you guys could take off, Corona hit... Did you look for other opportunities uh, that you could do with your, with, with, with your resources that you had? Uh, at first, it was a challenge because mm. we, of course, it came as a, as a wake-up call. Yeah. Uh, we had to get ways of maintaining the cars. Of course, you know, now cars are there. Mm -hmm. Of the course, drivers. you have staff. Yeah. Mm. Uh, staff, you have to get a workable work plan of how they can work from home, mm -hmm. uh, try to engage our clients, mm -hmm. tell, keep our clients updated on what is happening. Then, of course, um, the, the, the challenge, the biggest challenge, just like I had stated earlier, was managing most mm -hmm. of the hard clients. Because mm -hmm. this thing, uh, we had already, we, we have clients who have already booked. We don't have communications uh, yeah. f so far. The president has banned, or rather there is a lockdown, no mm -hmm. transport, no tourism. Mm. So it was, at first it was quite challenging. And yeah. we were not even able to move. Yeah. But um, I would say uh, there are those clients well, once after the curfew was um, initiated, yeah. we could do small, small trips like National Park. Mm -hmm. We could manage clients and mm -hmm. tell them all, now look, we can do this. We might not be able to do longer trips like Masai Mara. We might mm -hmm. not be able to fly, but we have something for you. Well, are you able to consider? Are you, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. So we were able to get at least few ways of managing the client right. and the situation at then. Did you take drastic measures uh, like, for example, some schools, you know, completely closed down and uh, uh, restructured their business. Some of them became bars. <laughs> Some of them <laughs> became churches. Yeah. Did, did your cars, for example, Zilianza Kubeba Maka, ama cabbages from I don't know where to another place. Like, did you have to restructure your business? No, no, no. I wouldn't say, no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, that particular time, no. We, we just, <laughs> I could pick up. I could pick up. <laughs> I could pick up. And I thank God. Yeah. Uh, we never went to that extent. Mm -hmm. But uh, the most important thing, especially uh, what we could do, like the national park, with, we, we, we thank God that that came through because mm -hmm. we were able to just maintain the clients mm -hmm. and also transport or get sm small small businesses mm -hmm. to do a few things. She has, she has mentioned uh, discounts. Uh, did you guys, uh, did your prices uh, get affected in of terms of, did you have to increase prices because asa, it be demands, come on, you pay 1,000 for a certain trip, now you have to pay 2,500, for example. Yes, because, of course, we were forced to do that mm -hmm. because we were forced to, uh, adhere to the COVID-19 rules, mm -hmm. uh, the sanitization processes. Uh, you have to ensure that whatever, or, or when all clients come through, they must be, uh, they must go through the, the testing processes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that really affected, but uh, we could, they could understand because it was a long time. Mm -hmm. People had stayed home. It was like people could not imagine they, they'd been home at that long period. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to manage, but uh, at least the prices yeah, they had to. They had to. Ili kwa ngatu weni kauchungu lazima tu. Ili bili. Okay. Ili What about managing stuff, uh, you know, Anne? Because, the, 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 I don't know, did you have to, like, let go of uh, staff members? Because we've seen, pe you know, people in your industry, hotels have had to shut down completely. Yeah. Um, just to mention a few, Intercon, there was no folk. Did, did, did you guys ever consider that, eh, hey, apa mali tunafika, if things don't change in X amount of time, we might just need to lock our doors completely? Um, we did not get to the point of thinking of locking the doors because, as I mentioned, there was still a lot of movement in the airport. Uh, and like I said, cargo was still a fully operational kind of uh, institution. So we were not seeing 
whether we'll ever lock the doors totally. Mm -hmm. And we thank God, so far we haven't had to do that. But there was obviously a shift in just what, what else can we do to make sure we maintain our staff if we can. And as I said, we were those, you know, like I say, very fortunate kind of hotels in terms of location and we were really running very high occupancies uh, in the city, which, mm -hmm. is, which, is a, which is a blessing for sure. And our staff levels were obviously meant to accommodate that kind of, uh, those kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. So the thing was that you, you, you look at how to manage that situation. So obviously, mm -hmm. the, because we were being so busy, mm -hmm. people were not also able to go and leave. Yeah? So wow. our staff had lots of lots of days accumulated. So mm -hmm. what we did was just to tell guys, you know what, let's take our days. After all, there's not that much work to do. And also we can work from home. Some of us could actually do that. Mm -hmm. So we just gave guys that break. So let's take our leave days. Let's actually get time to, to re-oil this machine, you know. Yeah. And, and, and it was a blessing in a way because people got to rest because mm -hmm. they were just running and running and running. And mm -hmm. even for the hotel, uh, having opened in 2017, like I said, yep. we also did not have time to even, you know, like you, you hardly have enough rooms to clean up and do all your major uh -huh. maintenance things. So <laughs> that was a really good opportunity. Yeah. So to like now do a very good um, a cleanup Very exercise. good cleanup exercise of yep. the building and of the people. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And then, of course, uh, come August and the president opened the skies and we were like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were very happy to call back our staff. Yeah. Uh, what I can say is that we are calling them back slowly in batches and okay. in pieces. Oh, so it's not something that has happened 100%? No, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. So we are coming back slowly by slowly in terms of essential staff as the business also grows. Because again, from August to now, mm -hmm. it's actually been growing, nice. which is a good thing. Yeah. So we're just calling back our people as need arises. Mm -hmm. And I think looking at how this 2021 looks like, if everything remains constant, we are very optimistic. Mm -hmm. We should have everyone back. Someone, someone had predicted on this very show that... Uh, for example, grounding the, 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 the airlines and the, the, the airport and so on and so forth. Um, restarting the engines of those um, you know, planes takes quite a while. I don't know. Did, did you experience uh, that kind of situation whereby Sasa is in the gezi mezima? Kitambuyo ndege iwasho ito nika shamaka. It's going to take some time. Are we seeing maybe a slow, um, you know, um, getting back to normalcy or... We can say that pre things pretty picked up uh, immediately when the president opened up. No, no, no. I think even the airlines, um, actually that is one industry I'm very sure was just as hard hit as us. Sure. And, and I think what the, the, for them, it, it translates directly to us. Those people who are sitting in that plane mm -hmm. are coming to those hotels. Mm -hmm. So their numbers translate directly to mm -hmm. our numbers. Yeah. So just like us, they are coming back slowly. So you'll see like if, if somebody was doing like three or four flights a day, mm -hmm. now they've reduced to two and they're slowly coming back to three. Okay. You will see that those who are actually pushing specific cargo planes are now doing underbelly for the passenger plane, mm -hmm. as opposed to doing mm -hmm. two separate, you know, passenger and then cargo, because it's expensive for them. So it's that kind of a thing. So for the airlines, the recovery plan looks exactly the same as for the hotels. Right. So we are going in tandem. So as they increase, as we increase. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's balancing somehow. Peter, let me ask you, in terms of challenges of uh, the industry, Wow. Countries like Tanzania said that, yeah, uko akuna corona. And they decided, you know what, business as usual. Did you at any one point consider probably shifting your business to a place like that where they, then they didn't even shut down for long? I think they did for like a month and they opened up na wakasema, mungu ametua corona, uko akuna shida yoyote. Did you, <laughs> did you at one point think of, usafiri tours can, might as well just move to Dodoma? Yeah, of course, you know, in business, you think uh, widely and extensively. Uh, it was quite challenging to see Kenya locked in a lockdown, mm -hmm. yet Tanzania, they are back in business. Yeah. We could move. If there was business opportunity, we could move. Mm -hmm. But how could we get there? Okay. But we just wanted to really see our country back in the system mm -hmm. and doing what Tanzania is doing. Mm -hmm. I could ask questions. What are they doing that Kenya is not doing? Or what is it that Kenya uh, was not right before God? Yeah. Or why is there, uh, you know, <laughs> such questions. As a business person, you have to go and ask and strain. But again, um, Tanzania was uh, back in the process within a very short time. Right. And uh, we, we wish them all the, well, all the best. Even on the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. you could see a lot yeah, of guys doing concerts. Going, yeah, they're yeah. doing concerts. In Kenya, we are still in a lockdown. Yeah. Like today, we still can't do... Uh, restaurants are closing at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. and uh, Tanzania they are open 24 7 mm -hmm. so I think uh, drastically we just need to move slowly slowly but uh, I would say if I'm given a chance mm -hmm. I would definitely fly the wings there <laughs> okay yeah. um, you know he's mentioned that one and uh, a point that I was gonna bring up later but now that he has said it the fact that 
you know, restaurants and bars are supposed to close down at a certain time, 10 p.m. that is. Mm. Is, is that affecting the hotel industry? Uh, for example, if I come to Crown and I decide to spend the night there, if you think at 10, you can tell me that you have to go to your soda kalale. I will not tell you to go to bed, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, I will find alternative means of, of providing you. you. <laughs> but the thing is that we have to abide by, you know, regulations. The, set, the regulation mm. set there. Mm. So what would happen? Yes, we will close the restaurant mm. or we will close the bar for mm. sure. Uh, then again, you need to retreat to your private space, yeah. which would be your room. Now, up till there, uh, I think that's pretty much now left mm -hmm. at your discretion. Yeah. But yes, we will close because the rules say so. Mm -hmm. We must abide. At, yes. at the end of the day, yes. Okay. So we will close the restaurant, we will close the bar, and we will expect you to abide as well. Yeah. And there being all these um, uh, stringent uh, measures, especially by some airlines and, of course, countries mm. uh, expecting you to have a COVID-19 certificate, mm. I don't know how many hours prior, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Do you also as assist or facilitate your, your clients? Um, in case I've, I'm staying at your hotel and my flight is on Friday, mm -hmm. uh, will you sort me out with all these details, all these VLO fever, um, COVID-19 tests and all these things before I travel? Am I shafika po wabana? Sit na kupatea kitanda ulale, chakulo kule, ito zingine jipangi. No, 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 no. We've made strategic relationships as well. And, and uh, that is also just make sure that you as the guest get the full guest experience from beginning to end. So what we can do, we will do. So what we've done is also partnered with um, various institutions that are providing that service. Mm -hmm. So we negotiate with them and tell them, look, we've got these people coming in. Of course, they're coming from outside the country, so they don't really know right. their way around here. So we offer that facility for sure, yes. Mm -hmm. We do have connections with specific institutions that are certified to do that. Mm -hmm. So when you arrive at our hotel, depending on when your departure is, and the turnaround time of these people, some of them, they've really improved from 72 hours to 48 to 24. Mm -hmm. So we have that. So based on your departure time, we are able to actually facilitate you to go and get those tests done and have your paperwork back mm. in good time to catch your flight out. Nice. Yeah, so we do that, yes. And, and for you, Peter, are you helping your clients, uh, you know, facilitating their travel, uh, not just providing the sanitizers and the face masks? Um, are there other ways uh, that, you know, you've made it easier for them to travel without necessarily increasing the, the amount of money that they might need mm. to spend? Um, that is in work in progress because uh, our international travel has not yet peaked uh, at that high rate. Mm. We are cu currently uh, targeting the local markets. But right now as you speak, we are, we are working with, um, with a team that is able to help our clients on time. Like those clients who are booking for Valentine's or who are booking for Easter, we are, we are able because it's, uh, it's mandatory now. You have to get tested uh, and give results. Uh, and of course, uh, the most of the airlines have given us hospitals that we c they have referred mm -hmm. uh, hospitals that they can go to. Mm -hmm. So we work with those hospitals right on, on time, mm -hmm. uh, prepare the results so that you don't have that last minute rush mm -hmm. and uh, having to give our clients headache to run, to run that. But okay. that is on a, on a work in progress. As All right. Speak. Yeah. So how would you say that the, 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 the travel uh, behavior of Kenyans has changed and even for other clients as well? How has it changed? Has it increased? Has it gone down? Are they preferring maybe okay. certain places as opposed to others? Um, uh, things are now back to normal. So if you die, you die. I would say, <laughs> I would honestly say, especially the domestic uh, tourism, it's really picked up. Yeah, it's really picked up. We are, I would say, I would even uh, uh, range it at 70% uh, wow. domestic and most people are also going uh, Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to say uh, a good number is going to Masai Mara. But the uh, Mombasa trips are like fully booked, even the planes. Uh, you realize that uh, most uh, airlines are fully booked, especially over the weekend. Mm. And uh, if you visit the beaches in Mombasa, you'd see guys packed up. Mm. So um, I would say we are back there. And momentarily, I think we're going to get there. In December last year, of course, with the lockdown, uh, sorry, with the curfew in mm. place, we could see people taking time. Because guys were intact for a very long time. Guys just wanted to get some air, some space to breathe. Mm. And families had a good time. So the mm. domestic tourism has really, has really picked up. What about for you at uh, Crown? Has, it, has the behavior changed? Are you getting certain you know, clients as opposed to what you had before? Or things are back to 100? They're not back to 100. But just picking up from what he said, there's a lot of movement locally. And as he says, Mombasa and its flights, that also through JKI. Mm. So what we're seeing is that now a lot more people are coming through our hotel 
as they wait on their flights uh, mm. to Mombasa, to Kisumu, to mm. Eldoret, to all these places that they can fly internally. Yeah, so they we come and Tuesday have, have some coffee. Yes, now right. absolutely. Because again, as you mentioned earlier, we have that Mombasa road traffic, which is everybody knows what that's about. Mm -hmm. So you need to get to the airport at a certain time to catch your flight. So rather than just wait out and maybe be caught up in that traffic, mm -hmm. people are coming out earlier. And you're finding a good place to hang out. Mm -hmm. You can grab a coffee, like I said. You can get some work done a little bit as you wait for your flight. Yeah. It's a fantastic way to actually not only just beat the traffic, but also just relax so, it out. So if my, my flight is at, say, 7 p.m., yes. uh, and I hear right now international flights, you have to be there at least four hours in advance, Yes. you know, with all your COVID certificates and, and everything. So I can come at midday, say mm -hmm. 12, have lunch at uh, Crown, and then you guys will take me to the to the airport. We, we will do a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. We will do a lot more, actually. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yes, you can come in at midday. That would be fantastic. Awesome. Because we actually have very special packages. As I said, we had to look for new ways, more innovative ways of actually getting more business done. Mm -hmm. So we revamped actually like more of our F&B offering, you know, food and beverage, yeah? So we have packages that allow you to come in. It's mm -hmm. actually a day thing. It's, mm -hmm. We actually call it refresher package. Mm -hmm. So you can come grab a meal, it actually has a whole meal, maybe spa, mm -hmm. swim, use the gym. Ah, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna swim in pool. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a rooftop pool, uh -huh. it's awesome. Uh -huh. The beautiful view. Nice. And then the, the after you indulge in whatever it is you want to do, yep. we provide complimentary transfer okay. to the terminals. Nice. So in good time for you to catch your flight. Good. We can do the same on your way back. Uh -huh. So you don't have to just arrive, come and chill uh -huh. with us for a bit of however long you wish and your family can come and meet with you there again mm -hmm. grab a meal mm -hmm. enjoy yourselves and Later leave when the traffic has also Died come down, down. exactly ah. and let's it's fantastic on that <laughs> note let's take a short break and then when we return of course uh still looking at the impact of covid 19 on the hospitality industry and if you're in that industry we would love to hear from you um especially from what they have said um you can know you know you can you can either add on or probably even give advice uh interact with us as far as that is concerned we take a short break right now, but we'll be right back. See you in Balna Sisi.